Hi, I'm glad you stopped by today. I'm Wilson Bickford and I want to share some exciting news with you. I'm releasing my own signature product line of oil painting products, uh, which will consist of brushes, paints, easel, palette, the whole nine yards. Today, the focus of this particular uh, segment is the brushes, the brush line. They'll be available in a brush kit as well as individually. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick little painting here to highlight some of these brushes. Um, these are one inch and two inch scenery brushes, which are made for applying base coat and uh, putting in background foliage. I specifically asked for a bevel to be put on the brushes for the purpose of foliage, which I will show you here momentarily. We're going to go through the whole brush line. Um, this two inch scenery brush is great for applying a base coat. I'm just going to put it in the context of a little painting here today because I think that's easier for you to grasp when you, when you see them actually in working uh, format as they would be. I do have my Wilson Bickford signature palette here today as well, um, which will be out on the market that will complete the line. And I'm using uh, Wilson Bickford Fast Flow White Base Coat Medium, which is just a thin oil-based medium that I blend my colors into. Now these are brand new brushes, never been used, so they're going to shed somewhat. So if you see me just doing this occasionally, I'm just flicking off some loose hairs. It's not the sign of a bad brush. Every brush will shed. I tell my students, if I grabbed you by the ankles and I rubbed your head on the floor that hard, your hair would break off too. So, but those are good for applying base coat. And also I can take a little bit of blue. They're good for dropping in your background. I'll take a little ultramarine blue. I'll leave it open so there's some cloud movements in it. I don't want to paint it flat. It'll look like the wall back here behind me if you paint it flat and solidly. So I leave it rather open. These brushes are great. I absolutely love them. I made some changes to some of the brushes you might be more familiar with, with this genre of painting. But uh, that was a result of 20 some years of my experience, as well as recommendations that I've heard my students make over the years. So I'll come back to this brush momentarily, but this is the one inch and two inch scenery brushes. Um, two different sizes for different size canvases, obviously. They'll do the same thing pretty much. I'm going to scale down to uh, my fan brushes. I have a large and a small. Same idea. As most of you know, fans are good for a lot of different things. Um, I like to use them for clouds. <clears throat> if I take some titanium white, I can fluff in a few little extra texture and billowiness on some of these cloud shapes back here. They're also great for waterfalls and fir trees, all kinds of things. In my mind, a fan brush is the most versatile brush on the planet. So I use the fan brush a lot. But as I said, this is just a quick little demo to give you an idea of what some of these are for and what they will do for you. A lot of these brushes are geared towards one or two things, but s several of them are multi functional as I'll show you. They don't have just one or two purposes. You can use them for a lot of different things. But just that easy you can drop in a sky. Um, also, let, let me show you one more thing with the fan brush. Um, you can actually take green. I'll take a little sap green and ultramarine blue. By the way, the holes in this palette are made to hold some of your smaller brushes, which is kind of handy rather than having them roll around on the table all the time. Um, that was another design feature that I requested that's pretty cool that a lot of people are liking. Um, but if I take some sap green, a little bit of blue, I'll show you. If you tap your brush, get a texture within the paint film. It's good for getting the indication of distant fir trees. And you just tap vertically. The trick is to get the brush loaded correctly. The brush will do the work if you let it. It's designed for that. So I just kind of tap in and I'll show you some different foliage techniques. Like I said, I'm going to put this in the context of a painting, but I'm not doing a full-fledged painting that I'm going to put in a gallery or anything like that. This is just to demonstrate the techniques. So I'll scatter a few of these throughout. 
I'm going to go back to that larger brush that I had a moment ago, the uh, scenery brush. Remember I said I was going to come back to that. Now this is good for fir trees. If you want to do more of a deciduous type leaf tree, I like to use this scenery brush or the, the smaller version, the one inch scenery brush. But if I, this is specifically why I asked for this brush to have a bevel. If I take this like this and open the corner, it makes it very conducive to foliage textures. You want to really open the corner up. Don't let it mat together. Keep it really spread out. And if I come in like this, instant trees. Don't you think you can do that? I know you can. Now, when I do stuff like this, it looks rather easy, and it is. Um, it takes a little bit of practice, like anything. I always equate painting to riding a bicycle. I can tell anybody how to ride a bicycle. Um, get on it, straddle the seat, have both feet on the ground, and pick one foot up and press down with the other foot to get the momentum going. But you're going to fall over and skin your knee several times. It's that feeling of balance and that lack of fear when you finally decide that you're going to do it. And it takes a little bit of practice. So does this. Now if I was to highlight that, I can come in with a little yellow and white. Same corner of the brush. A lot of paint. A lot of paint and a light touch. I can drop some highlights in there. So that will give you an idea of what that brush is primarily used for. It has other uses for grasses and that sort of thing too. Speaking of grasses, I have what I call my texture brushes. One and a half inch and one inch texture brushes, which are exactly what they say they are. They're a little coarser than the uh, scenery brushes made for texture. They work great for grasses and trees and that sort of thing. So if I take some uh, green and some blue, a little bit of burnt sienna. These are Wilson Bickford oils, by the way. I'm using ultramarine blue, sap green, cadmium yellow pale, cadmium red deep, burnt sienna, and titanium white. And these are great for texture for grasses and bushes and trees. I use them for all kinds of things. Exactly what they're meant for, texture. That's why I named them texture brushes. They're not really uh, meant for finesse. They're made for texture. They work great for that. So let's put a little bit of a meadow in here. Like I said, they're a little coarser, so they're great for the texture work. I'll block this in a little ways down here. The purpose of this, like I said, is not to do a finished painting per se, but to show you the techniques of the brushes. So I'm just kind of rushing through this. This is not a painting that I would want to put out, but it'll give you an idea of what the brushes are, what they're used for, and how they will work for you. And I, as I said before, these uh, are a culmination of what I've learned over the last two decades doing classes and advice from my students. I listen to my students. Um, they say, well, I wish I had a brush that did this. I wish I had a brush that did that. And I say that myself. I wish I had a brush that did this or that. That's where these ideas come from. These changes that I've made to some of these brushes that you might be familiar with uh, look similar to some of the ones you've had. You'll notice a few design changes. And that's what I've incorporated into them. I'm going to use a lot of paint. I can put a little bit of a hill back here. You'll see for anything that's rough and textured like that, these work really great. which will bring us on to my painting knives. I have a couple different size knives. Now some of my paintings that I do for my own work, I actually do strictly just knife work. Or I do the whole painting with knives. For this one today, uh, for what I'm doing, I'm just gonna do a little bit of scraffito work. If you look that up in an art glossary, it's just a fancy Renaissance Italian word that means you're scraping away paint to show the underneath layer, which happens to be white canvas in this circumstance. This will give me a little bit of finery in the trees, little tree trunks. Like I said, it's great for mixing your colors on your palette, scraping paint off. 
Speaking of scraping paint off, I have my little mistake remover. It's a Wilson Bickford wipe away tool. And let's put something in this. Um, this is good for removing color. Say you had a mistake down here you didn't like, you can scrape away the excess paint. It won't always come back to plain white canvas, but it'll get rid of the excess. So you don't have a lot of excess buildup where you don't want it. I'll just put some paint back in there. So it has two ends on it. One end is kind of round and pointed for doing precise little layouts. The other side is wider like a squeegee for scraping away the excess paint. Um, let's say there's a little building back here. I'm just going to scrape away the outline. I'm not sure. It'll come right in uh, and take a close look at that. Come in here with me and see. It's not going to show up probably too well, but the idea is it will get rid of the excess paint. See all the paint I picked up right there? It's great for making corrections and just scraping away areas where you've changed your mind and say, well, I wish I'd have put this or that there. It allows you to do it. Um, which brings us down to some of the flat brushes. I have a small flat, which is made of uh, a blend of synthetic and natural hair. I have a large number 10 brush. This is number six, by the way. This is a number 10 synthetic brush, which is absolutely great for all kinds of stuff. And I'll show you that in just a second. I'm going to go back to my small flat. And I'll box in this little area that I notched out with my wipe away tool. I'll put a little uh, barn back here. See, this will go on much easier now because I removed a lot of the excess paint from that area. I'll make a lighter version of that for the highlighted side. Take some yellow and red. And give the building a little bit of form. These brushes, like I said, have multi-uses. You can use them for a lot of different things. Um, speaking of which, that reminds me, back on those clouds, this is my one inch large mop brush. Very soft hair. This is made more or less for blending. So if you want to soften anything like the clouds or the trees, it's great for that. But another aspect of this that is great, you wouldn't think so to look at it at first glance, but this is actually good for texture too. Sometimes I use this for foliage. It's a very soft brush, so you have to get enough paint on it and you really add texture to it like this. See the pronounced texture on my palette really raised up? By doing that, now obviously I'd want to use it probably on a bigger canvas in relation to what I'm doing today. But if you use a light touch with that, it's really good for foliage techniques. You wouldn't think so to look at that, but it's a matter of getting it loaded right and practicing with it a little bit. There would be a trunk in here like a tree that actually works pretty good for stuff like that. So that's the mop brush. Now I'll come back to that flat brush I just had a moment ago. I need to swish this out a little bit. Now that other larger flat brush, the number 10 I showed you a minute ago, I'm going to get to that in just a second. Um, that would work obviously on a canvas that is bigger than what I'm using here. I'm going to take some white, a little blue, a little touch of burnt sienna, and I'm thinking of a lighter galvanized metal color for a roof. Not sure that's going to be light enough to show up. Need a little more white to get some contrast in it. There we go. But that'll give you the idea. That's what this lesson's all about. Okay. Um, now, while we're on the flat brushes, um, this number 10 flat I'm going to thin that paint down just a whisker. My paints are extra heavy, very full bodied for this wet on wet method. Um, it uh, makes layering color on top of color much easier. So sometimes you need to thin it down. This brush is good for squaring in anything like that, uh, doing fine lines, anything that sort of stuff. It's also, this is my main floral brush. I do a lot of flowers with this. If I take the edge of this and I start doing something like this, watch what's going to happen. And again, it's just uh, practicing the strokes. But this brush is very 
friendly for this type of work. I do a lot of florals. Now see, I've got white background on here. I didn't base it in as I would have if I was doing an actual painting. You see, it doesn't, it doesn't take much to get the effect of a rose here. Actually, if you go on my website, wilsonvicker.com, I have a DD, or a, not a DVD, a uh, YouTube clip on there that shows you how to do such stuff. But this brush is very versatile too. You can do fine line work with it. I do a majority of my florals with it. You see, it's pretty easy to get a rose effect. So you might want to check out that lesson on my website. So that's the flat. If I take uh, my rake brush, this is a half inch rake brush. And exactly like it says, it looks like a little rake. Using this brush, you have to thin the color down somewhat. So I'm going to take some red, burnt sienna, a little bit of blue, get something a little darker. And I, this is really great. If you come in tight with me here, take a peek at this. This gives me a really nice barn wood effect. It's good for doing animal hair. Like I said, the key to using this successfully is to get the paint thinned down well enough. So it skates on over the thicker paint underneath. It's a very feeble brush, you know, the very divided hairs spread out. So you can't put a lot of pressure on it. And that's the rake brush. Now the round brush, uh, pretty much is self-explanatory. You can do a lot of things with that as far as florals, just as a, a hint here. If I go back to this. The round brush, this is number six, is good for doing floral strokes too if you're doing daisies that sort of thing it has a multitude of uses you can use it to get in here to detail the barn so it, it's very multifunctional comes in handy in a lot of cases same as the filbert brush this is a number four filbert brush this is synthetic made out of the same material that the flat is i really like the synthetics for this because they clean out nicely and they have a good snap and they're just very user friendly much more than uh, a white bristle would be for that, a, a boar bristle. And this is the same thing. You can use it for floral strokes, all kinds of things. You can do fine line with it. Just very versatile. Which brings me down to my liners, last but not least. Now, when I was uh, approached and asked about doing products, I specifically asked for three liners. This is a number two script liner. This is a, what I call my number two detail liner. Notice it's shorter haired and it's fuller. There's more width to it, bigger girth. And this is my favorite. This is my long script liner. The long liner makes really long lines just like you think it would. Um, if I came in with my number two detail liner, anytime you're using the liners, you really have to thin your paint down. They're a very feeble, soft brush. So you have to thin the paint down so it'll flow. Most of the other brushes are very stiff and you can actually just push the paint around and bully it a little. These will not do that. You have to thin your paint down. So this detail liner is excellent for coming in into fine line areas, little small areas where you want to put some details. I'll put some shadows under the eaves on this. It'd be a great choice for putting some doors and windows on this building back here. Again, it has so many different uses. You will find a different use for it every time you pick it up. It's just really great. I do a lot of wildlife uh, paintings. It's great for that as well. It's just the right size. The actual script liner is a little bit smaller. It's more for really fine line stuff. Let me take uh, kind of a blue-gray here. Again, I'm just dipping in the thinner bucket to thin it down. And I roll that to a point. This is the number two script liner good for smaller little details where you want to put a bird in the sky, branches on a tree, anything like that. Thousand and one uses. You'll find a different use for it every time you pick it up, I swear. That brings us to the granddaddy of them all. This is the one I've been showing my students that my students have been absolutely loving, is this long script liner. I don't have a lot of place here to use it today in this particular little demonstration, but if you can imagine um, wanting to do long, long limbs on your trees or long grasses. This brush is your saving grace right here. I'm just going to take something dark so it shows up on my 
display board here, but if I take this and really thin it down and I roll it right full so those long bristles are full right from one end to the other, get your paint quite thin, scoop it right up. This will make very long lines. When's the last time you had a brush that you could do that with? Probably never, I'm guessing. But to put that in the context of where, would, where you would use it, say that you had uh, an area in your foreground where you wanted taller grass, you can get the long, long blades out of it when you want them. Also, it's great for doing branches and limbs on trees. It'll feed forever. If you get your paint nice and thin and well loaded, you can run that brush forever until you need to reload. Gives you those nice, long, thin flowing lines. So that's about it. That's all the products in my line. That's all I really required as far as uh, tools and brushes that I requested to get my job done. Um, these are ones I use the main uh, bulk course of what I would be using for any painting, no matter what it was I was approaching, whether I was working wet on wet or in a more traditional manner. So I hope you check these out. Like I said, this is the Wilson Bickford uh, Signature Brush Kit. It's available in kit form, and you can buy the items individually. Thanks for stopping by. Give them a try.